Hello. Welcome. We're back. It is New Game Wednesday. Uh, we're playing some of this new game called Heroes Hour. I know literally almost about this game. Almost about this game? Almost nothing about this game. Uh, it's a strategy game. It When I looked at kind of the screenshots and stuff, it kind of looked like Heroes of Might and Magic, which was sort of exactly my jam. Let me turn up the game sound, actually. It's a little quiet compared to the games that we usually play. Um, so yeah, so let's check this game out. Let's see what it is. Uh, we'll go right into the tutorial. Perfect. Welcome to Heroes Hour. This tutorial will teach you the basics. You're currently looking at the uh, you're currently looking at the adventure map, and your hero stands there in the center. To start, select your hero by clicking on them on the map. Easy enough. Look, yeah, it is like Heroes of Might and Magic. I've got a little like a, a you know a party, and I've got little troops in them. It's perfect. You can move your hero around the map by pressing right click where you want to go. Your hero can also interact with objects on the map. Go and pick up that pile of gold just to the north. Can do. Gold is the most important resource in the game. It is used to build up towns and increase the size of armies. Now make your hero go to the campfire over to the west slash left. Now this gives us a little bit of random materials. This is exactly like Heroes of Might and Magic. Your hero can only move so far each day, but that campfire just allowed you to move four extra steps. Use them to travel northwards. As you travel, most of the map will be revealed and you will find a sawmill with zombies protecting it. Can I go any further? That's it. Now that you can move no further, you need to end your turn. Do this by clicking the button below. Ending your turn lets the enemy players take their turn, and then the new day starts. The enemies play the game much the same way you do. Sure, great. End it. I'm behind, or rather in front of, a little picture of a, a dude, but hopefully that's not important. We can mirror me over to the other side if it turns out to be. Each day your hero has their movement points refilled. You also gain resources daily from certain buildings, like the sawmill up there. Perfect. It is like Heroes of Might and Magic. I'm ready. The zombies are defending it, but you can attack them by moving towards them. Notice how the path turns red when approaching a fight. Let's do it. Before battle starts, you can move around your regiments, which are marked by banners. You have two different units. Oh, okay, so is it going to be like a real-time thing? Goblin gunners attack from a range, while gargoyles are fast melee units. Click Start Battle to let the battle commence. So I can move them around. My gargoyles are here. Do they have dudes somewhere there? And we'll put my, my gunners, like, in the behind them. And then, Theo, you just hang out. Sure, start the battle. During battle, your units will fight automatically, and so will your hero, too. You can click and drag units to move, but you don't have to. Often, your units will do fine on their own. Okay, so this is just going to, like, kind of auto-battle out. Let's turn up the sound again a little bit. It's so quiet, this game. Let's actually see... Is this something we can change? Player 1! Is that something we can change in the settings? Now that the zombies have been defeated, you can pick up resources. Wood is useful for constructing buildings. You should also claim the sawmill by moving your hero to touch its gray flag. As long as you control the sawmill, it will give you two wood for each day that passes. So look, we, we killed 11 zombies. We didn't lose anybody. That is ideal. Um, options. Sound. Why so quiet? What the... Why? Why? Alright, I guess we'll have to tune this... Kind of on the fly. That seems sort of good. There you go. We have some sound now. All right, let's resume. So I'm going to go to the sawmill. Can I also pick up this wood that's just lying on the ground? We capture the sawmill. You lose army units in battle, so you should get reinforcements before you go into battle again. Move on to the east until you find the sound, then take control of it. You can also pick up any stray resources on the way there. To the east, you say. Okay, up there. Cool. Can we fight this bear first? No, it says it's impossible, so let's not let's not bother. Those bears aren't impossible. Uh we gotta wait a turn. Towns allow you to create units to expand your army. Do this by pressing the button with the man with a pitchfork. This brings up the unit creation screen, then pay uh gold to create the available goblin gunners. Okay, man with a pitchfork. That guy? Give me some goblin gunners. Oh my god, this is so much like Heroes of Might and Magic. I love it. Uh, give me the max. Each turn you can construct one new building in your town. You should build a tower, which is a type of structure that gives access to new units. You can click on the map icon in the bottom to uh, bottom left to open the build planner, then double-click the tower to construct it. Okay. So I'm going to go to... Hold up. This? Freeze says, wait, this game seems awesome! It seems a lot like um, Heroes of Might and Magic, definitely. 
dwelling that allows you to create gargoyle or scroll. Rangot says here for a second. Hey, welcome. We're gonna build the tower. Hopefully. You can now choose either gargoyles or scrolls for your army. This is also very Heroes of Might and Magic. There's a limit of how many units can be created of each type, which is reset every seven turns. Uh, okay, let's pick gargoyles. Is this a roguelike card game? I wish. No, it seems like it's more of a, a strategy game, like, uh, really like Heroes of Might and Magic. I mean, we're going around. Heroes of Might and Magic if, if everything was auto-battler. But I've got to build a... Am I done? Did I build a tower? Is it here? Is it asking me to put it down somewhere? There's the tower. Okay, cool. Oh, wait, hold up. Can I get more dudes? Can I get gargoyles now? Give me the max gargoyles. Great, okay, so we got some goblin gunners, we've got some gargoyles, we've got our lion, Mr. Theo. They want us to go up here. Is this gonna teach me a spell? Minor Shrine. Teaches a visiting hero a minor spell. It is Heroes of Might and Magic. I'm I'm on board. The Minor Shrine taught your hero the spell named Summon Anima. When you enter the next battle, you can choose to use the spell to more easily defeat your enemies. Casting a spell costs mana, which will slowly regenerate day by day. Now, please continue north until you find the Ore Quarry and attack the units defending it. Okay, but before we do that... Close, please. No? Let's get these crystals, and this gold, and some more gold, and some wood. Now let's go fight these dudes. Next turn. Challenge. Once battle has started, you can cast spells by choosing them within the spell book and then choosing where on the battlefield to cast the spell. You can, for instance, summon units on top of enemies' ranged units. That's an interesting idea. Um, by doing my spell book, you say, which obviously is somewhere. Okay, okay. So their dudes are there. I think we're going to crush them, but... Let's move our range units back and our melee units forward, just in case. Theo, you do whatever. Rangwat says, I've been getting into Don't Starve Shipwreck lately, and I've come up with the ultimate plan. So in the entire world, there are two doidoys, basically dodos. You need to bring them together to breed to infinitely get their feathers. Oh my god, bring the dodos back to life. I love it. Um, yeah, let's send our, our, our dudes after their range guys, maybe? So how do I do the spells? Speed one half. Spells? Oh, is this it? Summon anima right here. Okay, so we can summon some little fairies and stuff into their back line. Rangot says you can pick them up if they're asleep, and I'm playing the character as a unique compass, uh, where, where you can put an item, let's go at one time speed, where you can put an item in the compass to find more of those items, so I'm thinking of putting the doi doi in there. Oh, I see, to locate its mate. It's not a bad idea. Alright, we got their ranged dudes. We're fighting some dude here who's running away. Once battle has started, you can cast spells. Yeah, yeah, we did this already. Uh, we lost two gargoyles, which you hate to see, but we crushed their army. I feel like this is gonna be like Heroes of Might and Magic, where basically we don't want to go into a fight unless we're gonna crush the other side. Each time you fight, your hero gains experience points. Now your hero has reached level two! Giant Spatcha says that's how dating apps work, as far as I know. I have a dating app story, um, which is I was on a dating app and somebody reported me as for fraud, <laughs> which I didn't do. I didn't defraud anybody. Um, but what I didn't know is that if you get reported for any reason by anybody, it sends an email to everybody that you've matched with. And so I was reported for fraud and it emailed these other people that I, were talking, that I was talking to. One of whom was like, hey, are you really you? And they had like Googled me and like looked up pictures of me and stuff to, to, to match it. Rango says, or alternatively, I could put grass or seeds in that compass. I see. Piotr, doing a fraud, doing huge frauds. Um, we're level two. We can choose what type of hero you want to be. Cool. Let's see what we can get. Piotr, dating app details for top tiger subscribers? I don't know what that is, but I do know. I basically, I met with somebody who was like, hey, um, are you really you? And they're like, I looked you up, I googled you, because they knew my whole name. They were like, I looked you up, and like, it seems like you're you. Oh, it was horrible though. It was not what I wanted. Whoever did this to me, I curse you. Uh, Terramancy teaches your hero an earth spell. Oh, I'm at top tier! Oh, top, not top tiger subscribers. You know what? From now on, all of my subscribers on Twitch, y'all are my, 
my top tiger subscribers. Um, thank goodness I got tiger uh, tiger subscribers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we, if you, if you, if you donate one million dollars, you can get my dating app details. Teaches your hero an Earth spell. You are Piotr Bizzle, <laughs> IRL. That's right. That's what it says on my library card. Teaches your hero an Earth spell. Increase the effectiveness of Earth spells. Decrease your resource cost of creating units in any of your towns by 20% per, uh, per rank. They're great! That's right. Uh, we're getting the easy one, the simple one. All my resources for creating units by 20%, that seems huge. Tiger joke. You can see information about your hero's stats and skills by double-clicking them on the map or double-clicking on the portrait in the bottom left. So here's our dude. He's a lion. Not even a date. Your dating app details. No, yeah, yeah, If you donate $10 million, you just get my social security number. <laughs> That's correct. Um, no, I don't want Ivory Palace management. I want to look at my hero, Theo. He's an artisan. Mm-hmm. Okay. He has a little bit of mana. Let's go get the ore. Happy Wednesday, y'all. Hey, Soul Foundry, welcome. Granguet says we are playing a lion, which is ironic. He is definitely not a top tiger subscriber. Agreed. Maybe, maybe a top lion subscriber. But no way is he a, uh, a tiger subscriber. Let's go fight these. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Some kind of a snail? We'll go get him next turn. Oh, I should build up my town, though. What can we build? Oh, boy, I don't know. A plaza of arcane. Increase your town's income by 1,000 gold per day. Oh, I already have that. And I'm too poor for everything else, is that right? Okay, I already have a complaint about this interface. So when I'm in the building menu, I can't see my resources. That seems crazy. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> I need this information. 1400, 1330, 10, 12, 10. These, this Heroes of Might and Magic. It's, it's ore, wood, mercury, crystals, and sulfur. Rainbow says, top line subscribers don't get dating app details. That's right. This is line discrimination. It's deserved. Lions know what they did. So what do I need? What do I need more of to get these? Don't get the Piotr. <laughs> Insert sexual joke here. There's no need. Nothing sexual happens on this channel. This is a Christian stream. Dwelling that allows you to create golem or ice sculptor. Can I... It can be built. Oh, why is it red? Do we want an ice sculptor? I know... Okay, this is an easy answer, but... Just to pretend that we're considering both options, do you want a very cool ice sculptor, a master of the arts, you, you know, by way of chainsaw, or a dumb lump of clay? The answer, of course, is ice sculptor. Get in here. Great, we can get some ice sculptors now. I guess we'll have to run our dudes back to get them. This game is too complicated. <laughs> I already regret it. Let's go fight these dudes. A lot of fiddler on the roof jokes for a Christian stream. You know, I saw a, um, your hero currently knows two skills, both of them at rank one. Each skill can be leveled, blah, 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 blah. No, I should pay attention. This is a complicated game. I have to pay attention, even though, even though I'm absolutely averse to the kind of just, here's a paragraph for you to read tutorial. I must read this or we're going to have no idea what's going on. Each skill can be leveled up several times for better and better effects. Above the skills of the hero's stats, mouse over to see what they do. You can click on the spellbook to see what spells your hero knows. Afterwards, go and claim that ore mine. We already got the ore mine. Oh my god, we're ahead of the tutorial. Liar, this is a boat spider stream, not Christian. True. We, we celebrate boat spider here. The hero currently knows two skills, both of them at rank one. Each skill can be leveled up. Yeah, yeah, we already know this. We're, we already claimed the ore mine. Oh no. Did I break the tutorial by not doing... By Did I go rogue? They got some troglodytes, which I love. Milk string. Piotr, reading is a first. That's how we... Piotr, reading is a first. That's how we know he is a lost. Yeah, that's probably accurate. Do I have enough mana to cast my... Where's my mana? Mmm. I have a lot of problems with this interface. I feel like they keep not telling me information that I really need. Full fat milk. No, 51% milk. Just enough. Just enough to get the job done. Okay, let's... Great, our guys are here. Let's start the battle. I need to cast... I don't have enough mana. I have five. I need six. So our dudes are just going to get owned by all these troglodytes, I guess. I guess we just have to watch this happen. My hero's pulling back here. 
It's a milk stream. Oh, I was gonna say, it's talking of Fiddler on the Roof. I didn't see, um, in, in musical news, I saw Moulin Rouge the other day in, uh, on Broadway. It was just okay. <laughs> Wasn't it 100% 101% milk you were selling though? Oh my god, we need to to market that. It'll be like high performer milk. You gave 101%. Giant Spatcha says yikes. It was just okay. Would not recommend. It was I know why they did it the way they did it because they were like, okay, the movie, the good thing that people liked about the movie was the music. And, and recognizing popular songs that they know. So we'll just lean into that as hard as we possibly can and cram in as many popular songs as we possibly, possibly can. Yeah, it's wrong. And also, like, the main guy, like, it's rough because you go from Ewan McGregor's voice, which is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voice. This is uh, Moulin Rouge, which was a movie in, like, 2000... the early 2000s with, with our man Obi-Wan, Ewan McGregor. Um... And there's a Broadway production of it, but they went from like a man with a beautiful, perfect, wonderful voice in, in Ewan to this guy with like a really dorky voice. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It was fine. Um, it really felt like it, there's one song at the curtain call where basically the show's already over and now they can just sing as much as they want. And you could feel the show being like, this is what I wanted the whole time. I just wanted to unburden myself of the plot of this show and just do a bunch of jukebox songs. Ewan McGregor has a huge talent. Should have gone to Little Shop instead. Oh, it's not a bad idea. What is it about? That's a good question. It's about a man who goes to the Moulin Rouge Theater in Paris in the 1890s uh, and tries to get them to put on a show that he's writing and there's a series of confusions whereby uh, he falls in love with this this performer at the Moulin Rouge, and they're gonna put on his show, but it's being financed by this this aristocrat guy who's a big dick who just wants to steal the love of this beautiful woman, uh, and that's the story. That's basically that's basically the whole thing. You don't need to watch the movie now, except that um, John Leguizamo is in it, so you do need to see. Wait until you see John Leguizamo, and then you can go, oh, it's John Leguizamo. If you're taking to a date to a Broadway show, definitely Little Shop of Horrors with the original ending. Do I have to go back in time to do that? But the Broadway wanted to just do music. That's exactly right. Yeah, and so they just crammed in as much music as they could. It really seemed like they were... It almost seemed like they were bothered by the, the prospect of having to do, like, the plot of the show. It was, like, kind of holding them back. Your hero currently knows two skills? Yeah, we already know this. I already got the ore mine. Oh, we broke the game. Okay, so we're gonna send our- I don't care about this game. We're gonna send our, our gargoyles over here. I just want to talk about Moulin Rouge and how much it was fine. Uh, the Giant's Patch says, nope, the current production has the musical ending as opposed to the movie ending. Oh, I see. Well, that was the other weird thing about Moulin Rouge. If we just- this is the, the discussing Moulin Rouge stream now. There, there's a show within a show in Moulin Rouge and they changed it totally from the movie to the musical for no, I would say no adequate reason, but I think it's because they didn't want to be accused of cultural appropriation. In the movie, the show is set in India that they're doing, which like would be inappropriate to have a bunch of white actors playing Indian people today. But if the show is set in the 1890s, kind of makes sense, but they got rid of that for the music. It's weird, I don't know. Um, let's fight these dudes. Yeah, they got rid of Spectacular 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 Spectacular, which is a banging song. Yeah, they got rid of the name of the show to make a dumb, <laughs> kind of a dumb joke. Yeah! Anyway, I was very lukewarm on it. What? Boycott the show immediately! That would be my recommendation. Anyway, I saw Moulin Rouge after I watched the movie this weekend and then I watched the, the musical on Broadway. Uh, I would recommend the movie. But like, honestly, if you want Ewan McGregor material, watch Doctor Sleep. Musepot says, in exactly in line with French Orientalism of the time. Yeah, a bit odd to change that. It was a bit odd. It felt, it felt overcautious, um, was my feeling. Theo is now level three. <laughs> I don't care about you, Theo. Uh, <laughs> let's see, we can get him learning. We could upgrade his royalty again and make him extremely royal. 
Um, increase the rate at which your hero gains experience. That seems good. Teaches your hero a new spell. Each time they level up, they have a 25% chance per rank to learn a new spell. Higher ranks teach more powerful spells. Chance Patrick says you should also watch Down With Love. Ewan McGregor also sings in that. I would watch that. He has a good voice, actually. I was surprised. I didn't realize he was a singer until I saw... Because I didn't know that he was in Moulin Rouge until I saw the, the movie. Doctor Sleep is really good except for one scene that feels like it goes on forever in a day. Doctor Sleep is... Okay, that's fair. I, I think Doctor Sleep is, like, weird. Because, like, it feels like a superhero movie, which is, like, good and fine, but doesn't feel like a... A, a sequel to The Shining until like the very end. It was I was mixed on on Doctor Sleep to be honest. Amusement says my older cat's name is Theo. Lol. Oh, that's a game about them. Okay, I'll respect Theo moving forward. Let's get Theo some learning. Theo can go to college and get some knowledge. Aaron Goet says I don't really watch films for actors. That's fair. I I didn't used to do that either. I used to be the same way. I didn't know who any of the actors were and everything. I just it's kind of a sickness of watching too many movies. I think. Where, like, now I recognize the actors and, you know, really associate them with their particular role. Okay, do we want treasure or experience? You always pick experience. Music says, I have no idea what's going on in this game. Me neither, to be honest. Where I'm... Listen, listen. This is the Moulin Rouge stream. This isn't the, the Heroes Hour stream. It's Heroes of Might and Magic, but if it was more hands-off. And Giant Spudge says, wait, did you see the movie for the first time this weekend as well? I did! And Giant Spudge says, also Nick Cage, though. True! Nick Cage does have some good meta casting kind of roles. And Rengoth says, in Doctor Sleep, the sequel to The Shining, the book? I love The Shining film, but I haven't read the book, which is apparently completely different and doesn't sound as much as my thing. I th I'm actually not sure. A lot of imagery is similar to the Shining movie, and like they get an actor to be s slight spoilers for Doctor Sleep. There's an actor who is who looks a lot like um oh what's his name, Mister Mister One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, The Shining. Uh, you know his name. He has his he has a hairline. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um. Yeah, they, they have an actor who looks like him in the same role, and so it seems like Jack Nicholson. Thank you, Soul Foundry, yeah. Um, Heroes of Moulin Rouge! That's the, ga that's the game that we should be playing. And Soul says, Nick has, Cage has an amazing movie coming out. I still haven't seen the massive weight, no. There's, there's something weight of massive talent. I haven't seen it yet, I really want to. Jan Spice says, oh my god, how did you do theater stuff in the 2000s without having seen Moulin Rouge? I dodged it somehow. I didn't even realize it was as old as it was. I was like kind of surprised that it's like early 2000s. The overwhelming burden of being awesome or something. That's what it is. The the uh, the something burden of, of massive talent. I can't remember. Okay, what's Theo going to be good at? Is he more good at learning or royalty? We can give him some wisdom. I think he's more royal now. That's, that's what we need. Let's get this artifact, the tunic of whatever. Um, he's wearing the tunic of mayhem now, which is gonna give him plus one legion skill. You know what legion skill is, I know what legion skill is, but just in case, let's check what legion skill is. Uh, increases the health of all creatures by plus five and damage of all creatures by plus one. Especially useful with basic creatures is the tip. Upgrade requires level eight and better master- okay, so, so it's making my, my dorks better. If I have a lot of dorks, it will be of increased usefulness. Oh, lost hero, once mighty, now dead, but there's always a silver lining, and you may be able to find something useful on their remains. Okay, this is like finding the backpack or something in Heroes of Might and Magic. Or the skeleton. Rengwat says, yeah, but I believe it takes place after the events of the book, not the film. Oh, okay, that may be the case. Especially since the child took a bigger role thematically in the book, I heard. Also, by the way, even King's own miniseries made to be an accurate depiction after his big disappointment in Kubrick's film, stole aspects from Kubrick's film. That's... Good! If you can make, like, a, a movie that re-inspires the source material, it's a good way to live. Uh, we can choose what treasure to keep. Do we, I, we gotta get the Cape of Winds. What, am I gonna get five Mercury or the Cape of Winds? What is this, a joke? I'm wearing the Cape of Winds now. Kubrick said himself that he took, uh, inspiration, more inspiration than the recreation of the book, and not in a literal sense, but his own interpretation and emotions from it. Honestly, I think that's, I mean, talking again, if I could just pivot the conversation back to Moulin Rouge, I appreciate that they didn't just do like a shot for shot retread of the movie, that they were like, okay, what is gonna work better in a Broadway show? What is gonna work better on stage? I think that that's, 
it's prudent when adopting to a different medium to be more open-minded about how to adapt. It's got remnants of a kingdom from yesteryear. You may be able to pillage some resources. Okay, let's do it. Do we want... Oh, we want goblin gunners, right? Give me more goblins. That's probably a bad choice. These guys are challenging. These guys are moderate. Let's go fight these dudes and we'll capture the black market. Visiting the black market allows the hero to purchase magic-oriented artifacts. At some point, we're going to need to go back to the castle. Your hero currently knows two skills. Oh my god, we're still stuck. I got the ore mine already. I'm 90% sure I captured the ore mine. We should double check after this, but just in case. Okay, we got a lot of ranged guys. This always happens in Heroes of Light and Magic also. You end up, your melee guys get ground up and your ranged guys just accrete over time. Um, yeah, do I have mana? We'll find out. We'll find out. I do have mana. Send the anima in. Send little fairies into their back line. My hero's fighting. This is on cooldown. These guys look like they're doing good. And Rangwat says, which for King was personal in a sense, because the Shining was apparently was made with a lot of experience and emotions of dealing with being a parent and his relationship with his kids. Oh, interesting. So you... That would be an interesting experience, to write something which is very personal to you and have it, it adapted in a way which is not super faithful to the source material. Okay, Theo, what are you going to be better at? Let's get more... Um, he could learn offense or warding. Theo, these are both great options, and I appreciate you bringing these to me. However, you are going to learn more royalty. So, of course, the film going a completely in different direction where Jack is an insane psychopath. Right. What a nice thing if you write something that's sort of semi-autobiographical. <laughs> and they change it to be like, oh, this person is just crazy. You'd be like, no, that's me. <laughs> Rangot says, I don't think I'll ever read the book, though. So I hadn't read a Stephen King book ever for years and years and years and years. And then I read The Outsider. Uh, which came out, I don't know, a few years back, maybe 2019. Um, and uh, I was kind of disappointed. It's, it's, it's good, it's readable, but it just, I feel like maybe his earlier books are more concise, but it just feels like this book is like three times as long as it needs to be. And John Spatcher says, are you just recreating The Lion King now through Theo? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, Theo is our, our Mufasa. Can we rename him to Mufasa? In a derelict building, you find a guild of thieves. A thieves guild, you might say. But you wouldn't. It's a guild of thieves. Peddling strange artifacts of magical qualities. You determine with your... You determine with yourself. It is as likely they have... Oh my god, this sentence is blowing my mind. You determine with yourself. It is as likely they have been stolen from the enemy's lands... From the enemy's lands as your own. And thus decide you may as well browse their wares. I feel like there was an easier way... I... Okay, okay, okay. We have money. We have 16,530 money. We could buy the whole place. Do we want... Okay, okay, let's review what items are for sale. <laughs> this is such a bad Let's Play. If somebody was, like, thinking of getting into this game and saw this stream, they would have no idea if it's good or not. And neither do I. Four-leaf clover, um, which... But we already have an artifact in that slot. Also, the UI overlaps, which we don't like to see. The armor of something. We don't know what it is. The UI overlaps. Zaro's Mask, that's probably what we're gonna buy. The Demonic Kilt, I was wrong, we're gonna buy the Demonic Kilt. And, unless this is somehow even better. No, we're getting the Kilt. A Kilt for Zaro and a Mask. And, no, save the rest of the money for, for units. Okay, we're wearing the Kilt. Do I get Demonology? Demonology. After combat, allows the hero to sacrifice some of the experience gained to summon demonic reinforcements. Okay, it's like necromancy in Heroes of Might and Magic. The amount of units offered depends on rank and the size of the defeated army. Each rank also gives an experience point discount and allows summoning stronger units. And Rangwet says, I've never read a Stephen King book. The closest was an extract from It in secondary school. I didn't realize how weird that book was. I've, I haven't read it, but I've heard that book is very weird. From an outside perspective. I was not expecting some shit about a giant turtle having disagreements with a transforming alien in space. That is alarming. I did not know that was an aspect. Did I not capture this mine? Okay. We're back on the tutorial. I forgot to actually capture the ore mine. They know if Moulin Rouge was good or not. They know. Tell us. 
Each day you should construct another building in town. Oh yeah, we did forget to do that. Buildings are expensive, but they're the key to winning. All right, everybody remember that. That's the key, is that buildings are expensive. As you construct more buildings, your town develops, giving access to even more buildings as the game progresses. Double-click your town and construct the infirmary. Eee, you're so bossy. All right, you want the infirmary? It doesn't even sound that good. Infirmary. After combat, the infirmary will save half your dead units belonging to this faction. They will be added to the town's garrison. Okay, that is actually good. Only one infirmary can be active per faction, but additional infirmaries for the same faction raise the percentage of saved units by 20% up to a total of 80%. Okay, build it. We got it. Did the IT films have the giant space alien god? I haven't seen the films either, to be honest, but they better have. Tomorrow, a new week starts. This makes all enemies stronger, but you also get- Okay, it is Heroes of Might and Magic, but you also gain units in town from all the army buildings you have constructed. Great, cool. So we'll send our dudes back to the town to fill up on new units. It'll be a perfect, wonderful time for everybody. Do I have more movement? I do. Theo? Can I rename you? I cannot. My sulfur income is zero. Regwet says, I haven't seen the It films either. You could send your hero home to collect the new units in town. Instead, build the tavern in town, then hire a hero using it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Let's get the tavern. We'll do it, the, we'll do it their way. This UI is a nightmare, but... Me and Piotr not watching or reading cultural staples. That's the key! Ah, oh, good. So much common ground. Alright, we're going to the, the tavern. We could recruit a hero. His name is Real Doer. He's a level 2 wizard, not unlike myself. Uh, he knows Aethermancy, Aeromancy, and Regeneration. And he has some little dudes with him, so we'll recruit him. This hero works just like your first hero. You can give them the new units, then send the two heroes to meet out in the world. No. I won't do it. He needs new units. Okay, recruit the mans. I want the ice sculptors. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we do this, can I build... I already built this turn. Just kidding. Give me... The ice sculptors. Maximum ice sculptors. Maximum whatever they are. Gargoyles. Maximum goblins. Rengwet says I need to read The Idiot sometime. Was planning to for ages, but kept just not reading it. Is that Steve Martin? This music! It is kind of charming. <laughs> the town music is nice. Alright, they want me to make the heroes meet? When two heroes meet, you can exchange units. You can drag units between armies or right-click, blah, 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 blah. You can... No, I gotta pay attention. You can right-click to quickly switch them from one hero to another. You can either put all units with one hero or split your forces. For now, give all your units to your strongest hero. You got it. Boom. That's Theo, not real doer. Why do we have high Doctor Strange? It's real doer. He's a big Doctor Strange fan. To the north of your town, there's a mountain pass leading into a new area. Your army should now be strong enough to defeat the creatures guarding that mountain pass. Go take them out. Okay, real door is going to be like our governor, I guess. You always do this in Heroes Might and Magic. You leave one hero behind to be your governor. Oh no, the idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I don't know how to say this word, but I know who you mean. Um, oh, wait, is the idiot... I'm thinking of The Jerk by Steve Martin. Um... Which is not even close to The Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. I don't know. The Idiot. I haven't read it. I don't know. I don't read books that are longer than 40 pages. So I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. Let's go up here and fight this garrison. We could also fight this worm. Oh, we gotta fight this worm. To the north of your town, blah, blah, blah. Get out of here. He also wrote War and Peace and Crime and Punishment, which I haven't read either of those either. Yeah, I haven't... I haven't read them either. Those are the kinds of books where everybody wants to have read them, but nobody wants to read them. Alright, there's a worm. They say a leech, but we know it's a worm. And also a speeder. They say a corpse eater, but we know it's a speed ray. Um, there's a big thing here. Okay, so again, our melee guys, I guess, will go up in front. What are you, Ice Sculptor? You're ranged. Okay. You guys all stand back here. My hero will also fight. And we'll, we'll start the battle. Summon dorks! Go! Oh boy, the dorks got chewed up by the spiders. We need more dorks! Get them, quick! It's 
going good. We won. Player won. That's me. Uh, we did lose two gargoyles, but that's not so bad. Demonology. Oh, do we want to summon some flame stokers? Of course. I actually don't know. Is there morale in this game? So one of the things in Heroes of Might and Magic was, if you had dudes from multiple factions in your army, it would lower your overall morale. But I don't think morale is a thing in this game, so maybe it's fine for... Oh, no, it is. It totally is. Morale. There it is. Gives your creatures a chance uh, per second per stat to enter high morale where they move twice as fast and attack twice as fast. I see. So by having the flame stokers, it's fine. Rangbat says, I just read the idiot because I heard it. I just want to read the idiot because I heard it has a good philosophical Russian themes and heard good stuff. Also, I first heard of it when I was in a Pathologic 2 stream and the streamer saying how Pathologic 2 reminded him a bit of it. I guess I could see that. They both seem very Eastern European. Uh, uh, philosophical vibes. A sigil stone. Visiting the sigil stone allows the hero to spend resources to gain a magical skill. I don't have enough mercury. This is also very hero's might and magic. I never have enough mercury. That's okay. I don't want to learn magic skills anyway. Except demonology, I guess. Uh, do we build this turn? Which makes sense. Russian game with classic literary uh, literature style writing and Russian themes would definitely be similar to probably the most iconic literature writer that does check out we already built this turn it says but I don't believe it is that true did we already build this turn I guess we did oh do we want to build an upgraded hall of shaping to let us build golem into automatons but we're not building golems gargoyle into stone watchers Oh boy. Yeah, give me goblin guards. Upgrade the workshop. Ivory Palace has grown to township. Grand Bazaar. Enchanted wares. Goblin gunner expert. <laughs> These are all things I guess we've unlocked. But they're also grayed out, so maybe we didn't unlock them? I don't know. We... I assume we unlocked them. Open? How do I dismiss this? Do I press the button that says open to make this go away? Nope. Done. Okay, cool. Rivets is, though, in my opinion, the best comparison for Pathologic 2 is Pathologic. That does check out. All right, we gotta go get the... whatever this is. The wood. Treasure chest has male gloves, plus two defense, or heavy cape. But we already have a cape, so let's get the gloves. And then fight these dudes. When your army is big enough, some of your units will have to stay in a reserve, waiting until later in the fight to join the fray. You can drag out the reserve to switch you which units are being benched. Okay, but we got everybody here, right? Can I move my dudes individually? Oh, I can. I don't really want to, but I was just mostly just curious. That's really weird. They, like, stick together. Okay, well, we're, we're sieging the, the garrison. Rangwood says, if someone says they, like, loaded the two towers, I recommend them a similar book called Return of the King. Ah, very shrewd. Let's... Okay, so we'll start it, and then we'll summon some dorks behind the enemy lines uh, by their gunners. How's that sound? The battle plan commences. So, this game... I can see what they're doing, right? They're like, Heroes of Might and Magic is a great game, but it takes so long. We spend so long fighting the battles, whatever. But I actually really like fighting the battles in Heroes of Might and Magic, so I don't... I don't know that I prefer this admittedly expedited but much more hands-off combat system. Remember, says that one mess-up now means I have to recommend them something called The Last King? We'll write it. We'll write it on the stream. We'll invent The Last King and we'll get people, but then we can recommend it to people. It'll be, it'll be the sequel, it'll be the true ending, the true last third to the Lord of the Rings prequel. Um, yeah, or trilogy, if you prefer. We'll, we'll, we'll write it ourselves. We'll make sure it ends the right way this time. You should be ready for the game now. There's more stuff to explore. And we know how to play Heroes of Might and Magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got 3,240 XP. Can I get some demons? A spirited fire? I don't really want one weird dude, but okay. Oh, and I leveled up? Uh, more royalty. Upgrade requires level 11. More learning. More offense. Alright, Rangoat says, The Last King, apparently, The Last King, Norwegian, I can't read this Norwegian word, is the 2016 Norwegian historical drama. Okay, so it's it. I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but 
this is this is our inspiration. No, think Norwegian historical drama when you're thinking of what The Last King should be about. This is impossible. This is easy. Oh, this is the enemy hero. Giant spatula. I don't really want one weird dude. Wow, I'll <laughs> go somewhere else then. No, I wasn't subtweeting you. Um, I was. Let's do. <laughs> let's do it like this. We have our one weird dude. We have the hero. I hate this game. <laughs> let's do it though. I'm into it. I'm into it. But it. I just want to be playing Heroes of Might and Magic. Summon the dorks. Where should we put them? By their wizards? Oh, they have a big seahorse. I want a big seahorse. Wow. Loder, the last king. They for some reason moved to Norway. It just turns out it was taking place in Norway the whole time. What you didn't realize? We gained some XP. Can I get some more of these little uh, flame stokers? Nope. You have to get a war clown? Why did they put me in this game? This creature turns into a copy of a nearby enemy. The same enemy unit cannot be imitated twice. Sure, give me a clown. You know what? <laughs> Get him in. Yeah, I'll take a clown. Whatever. I'm not even I'm not even upset about it. So okay, so that was our enemy like player. Giant Splash is an own guy hate this game. We got the clown! Oh, we got a build back at town. Don't forget. We already built this turn though, so everybody do forget, because we already did it. Double forget. Forget that we already did it. But then I'll also forget to do it again, and then we'll come out even. Uh, let's build a nice university to get more Arcanists. We could also build Arcanists, as we know, right on flying carpets. Uh, a center of Arcane. Increase your town's income by 500 gold. Yes, economy. Invest. Today. Uh, Rivian, what are you doing? I mean, real door. Go be in the garrison in town. Can you not do that? Fine, just live your life standing right next to the castle. Theo is our man. We're going to keep going this way in the hopes that this will bring us close to... Do we need sulfur? I need mercury, mostly. But I'll take the sulfur. A lost hero. You may bring with you either a material good. We can get the Necklace of Balance, which gives us plus one attack and plus one defense. Yeah, let's get it. We got the Balance. I like that they show our little dudes around us, though. There's the clown underneath us, too. Uh, give me the, the fire, that'll give us some more movement. There's some griffins here, it looks like. Ray with the sword and get some no Norwegian waffles and sausages with his power. Are there famous Norwegian waffles? Frodo eats a horse head. That I do know they eat in Norway. Did you see this thing on Twitter this week? That apparently, I don't know if this is actually true, but possibly it's a thing in Sweden that like if you're visiting somebody's house and they eat dinner, they won't eat it. They won't, like, invite you to eat dinner with them. They'll just be like, you just wait, we're gonna eat dinner. John Spider says, yeah, it's true. That is some... Like, I know it's just a cultural difference, but that is some barbaric behavior. To have somebody at your house, like, just like... Even on, like, a primitive kind of a fundamental level, imagining being at your house, eating a meal, and somebody else is at your house, and you're just like, no, you don't eat this meal with us. I can't imagine it. Solfander says, that sounds like my Swedish friend, I can confirm later. Instantly become the Joker. It instantly turned me, I'm now the Swedish Joker. Anytime I travel to Sweden, I become the Joker immediately. It's a curse, but it's one that I live with. These griffins are huge, I didn't expect this. Are you griffins? They are griffins. It's female Soran as well, because she moves to Norway to transition outside the regressive laws in Middle Earth. Honestly, good for her. You know what? Good for you, Soran. I'm now on your side. <laughs> So Hunter says, I know they watch Donald Duck cartoons as a whole as a whole on Christmas. I have a kind of a racist Donald Duck comic in my house. Should we see if we can find the racist Donald Duck comic? I'll be right back. It's only slightly, it's like a cultural appropriation y Donald Duck comic. Let me see. Rangman says that is hard to imagine. So, should we go to the big camera? I hate going to the big camera because I'm always self-conscious. I just want to appear as one third of the screen on a 720p <laughs> earphone in the wrong ear uh, screen. But let's go to the, the big camera. Uh, yeah, this is 
Mahara uh, Donald Duck Adventures. Uh, and the adventure is, uh, where is it written on here? It's Maharaja Donald. Uh, he goes to India. Donald Duck stars in Maharaja Donald. There you go. It's a classic, apparently. But, um, I got this on free comic book day. And it's, I mean, it is what it is. It's, there, there he is. It's, 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 it's a little, it's on the line, certainly, if, if nothing else. Yeah. Anyway, we got the Maharaja Donald comic. Apparently, the original of this is like, oh, it's the plot of Moulin Rouge. Oh, yeah. That's not even the best comic we have here, though. Wait, hold up. We got to I got to share this because when else am I going to talk about this? Um, this is also a comic that I got. Uh, Rangwa says, you know how female Sauron, how much female Sauron art there is? There's a lot for some reason. I think there's a lot of I could see that. I could believe it. And the Phantom have created a unified general design for her. She's kind of hot, not going to lie. She better be. Uh, and Soul Foundry says, Watching old cartoons, I used to love, uh, kills me now. It's hard to go back to some of it. It really is. And Ringo says, How big is the collection? Honestly, not big. I just pulled out... These are comics that I got from one year at Comic-Con. Um, but this is a comic called The Trist. And I know what you're thinking. The Trist? What could that possibly mean? Um, this is a comic book about a, uh, a drug kingpin who, that's rule 63 of the internet. I'm pulling out some dark memes. This is, this is the story of a drug kingpin, uh, who invents a new drug called Zealot. Uh, and one of his rival gang leaders basically breaks into his apartment and pumps him full of this drug and electrocutes him with a car battery. And the result is that he gets superpowers. But I bet the part that you're not guessing, that all sounds fair enough, right? This is like an edgy, you can see the art style. It's like an edgy 2000s comic. None of this is surprising so far. Except that uh, he gets all of the powers of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so he can, he can multiply things. He can like heal people and come back from the dead and stuff. Uh, so he becomes, he becomes super Jesus. And he uses his super Jesus powers, and this is true, to multiply a bunch of guns and shoot the other gang leader over and over with them. Uh, so that's the Trist. I don't know if they ever made a second one. I have the first one in the series. Never bothered to follow up. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a good one. And Rango says, remember that time Donald was a Nazi? I could see it. And so says, old Tex Avery, silly symphonies, so bad sometimes. By the way, it's the product and the guy they were robbing from? I don't know. I don't know, dude. <laughs> just, oh my god, turn water into wine? That is the only good ability I care about. I'm glad that you asked about that, because he goes to a little girl's lemonade stand and turns the lemonade into champagne. <laughs> That's a real plot point. God wise says, collector's dream. Let me see if I can find him turning the, the lemonade into champagne. Um... Oh, it's such a good comic. We'll have to do, like, sometime when I have a better camera set up, we'll have to do, like, a read-through. Drugs equals Jesus superpowers. This is insane. Indeed. Oh, there's such, there's, like, a really good, let me see. There's, like, a, a, a page-turn reveal in classic comic book style where, yeah, you can see the little girl, I don't know, you can see the little girl getting uh, tons of money in the bottom panel there, selling her champagne. <laughs> Can you take communion by binding him? And, and Silver says, yes, I need this comic now. I'll take a look. I'll see. I'm sure they made more. Um, it's, it's an indie comic. It's from Kinetic Comics with a Z. Um, it was $2.95 when it came out on July 1st. What year was this? Uh, looks like 2005. So in 2005, I bet we could find more of it. Anyway, that's the trist. I just, we had to talk about it because I had it on hand. We're never gonna be, we're never gonna have an excuse to talk about the trist any other time. Uh, why is it called the trist? Instead of, like, the Christ? I do not know. He's the true Christ. So what is his relationship with God? I don't know. He's Jewish, though, crucially. There's a, um, there's a, a panel of his dad teaching him Hebrew with blocks with Hebrew uh, letters on them. So he's, he, you know, he's not a Christian man. No, we bring up the Trist more. We'll do a, a reading, a staged reading of the Trist sometime. Watch, you're going to get Trist as one of your units? I would die. I, I would perish. He can be friends with the war clown. Okay, 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 okay. So you remember talking of the Bible. You remember the story where David sends that one dude up all by himself to get killed in battle? That's what we're doing with the war clown. 
I don't want this war clown. Let's put him up front <laughs> all by himself. He is our sacrificial lamb. War clown, good luck. And then we're gonna steal his wife. Go! Please die. Please get killed. Uh, we gotta drop the dorks down. Where should we put them? Oh, there's baby griffins, too! Uh, let's put our dorks in the middle of their griffins. Sacrificial clown. So the clown transformed, I guess. But I, I lost track of him. We'll see if he survived at the end of this. I mean, it's chaos. I can't tell what's happening here. I can't form a strategy around this. I can only think about the trist now. The, the worst thing about the trist isn't that he turns, he gets all the powers of Jesus Christ. It literally, that isn't the worst thing about it. The worst thing about it is the other rival gang leader is the leader of the Chinese gang in town, and his name is Kung Fucius. It's horrible. It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible comic. The art is pretty good, um, but uh, yeah. Minus one clown. Yeah, we did it! Ringwood says, but he then becomes Jesus. That kind of puts him in a weird position. I bet in later comics they explore his change in beliefs, re uh, realizing he is the coming of Christ and disagreements with family. I guess I, his dad might be dead. I can't remember. Um, it's it's weird. What the hell? It's super it's super trying to be edgy. Anyway, the war clown got killed. That's what's important. Can we summon some demons? Oh no, we also lost our spirited fire. No, two war clowns. No. That's a net increase in war clowns! Unfortunately, it says there's very little about this comic on Google. You might have the only existing copy. You're, you're privileged. So privileged to be in the presence of a number one issue of the Trist. <laughs> Kung Fu is shaking my damn head. It's terrible. We need to create the Trist too. We'll do the tie-in game for the Trist on a game jam sometime. Yeah, gimme... Give me the two war clowns. Let's get crazy. I need more clowns. Oh, we leveled up. Good. Um, we could get... Oh, good. Just what I wanted to make a decision. Um, we could get scouting... Bodyguards? Adds bodyguards to the hero's army during combat. The power is based. Sure, give me some bodyguards. What's better than one war clown? I think you know. Oh, I know, Musequid. If only we could get... We'll see. Our new goal is a crew... War clowns. First result is Trist. Now, a secret meeting. Oh, a tryst. Yeah, or the place of such a meeting. A tryst. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is there much about kinetic comics? Again, the art is pretty good. Like, it's not... Let me see if I can find some... Like, a good a good panel. This is a sick, a sick cover. A sick page. Where he's, like, first climbing up out of the wreckage of his building after they electrocute him and stuff. Like, the art is really good. It's, see, like, it, it's one of these things where it's almost baffling that they, like, put this much effort into something with such a bad concept. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. What are we doing? We got the clowns. Do you want to go to the keep? Visiting the keep will allow you to turn several groups of units into just one type of those you have in your army. Giant Spatcher says, yeah, I'm not sure there was even an issue three, an uh, issue two. Whew, you hate to see it. I did get this for free. This is one of the weirder comics I own. Let me just see what else we've got here. While we're looking at while we're looking at this bag of comics from one particular year at Comic-Con. Let's go to the let's see, let's see, let's see. It's mostly we looked at this before, because we have all the Kingdom of Loathing. No, there's nothing else that good here. We got the Kingdom of Loathing, choose your own adventures. Uh, there's this good Hellboy comic, which is, uh, the, the Chained Coffin. Oh no, it's the Corpse. I'm wrong. This is it's still a good one. Um, and I have the Dungeoneers, which I don't know what it is, but I have, I have this too. Anyway. And also a free issue of Constantine. I had never read that. Anyway, the Trist is the best one. It's the only one that matters. And then the second most important one is Maharaja Donald as a racist artifact of a different time. Autocorrected change where I searched to first comic and I was so confused. Oh no! Did we remember to build? Let's build at the beginning of the turn, like the opposite of what we should do. Oh man, should we get a marketplace? Allows you to buy and sell resources? No. You only need a marketplace when you're desperate. Like if you have, for instance, zero mercury. Which we do. Okay, let's get a marketplace. They always rip you off in the marketplaces in these games, though. Give me a marketplace. And then the idea is you get more towns, and they rip you off less the more you have. But, I don't know. 
Is it a new week yet? No, not even close. Okay. Theo, go go capture this 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 stuff. Go. Ruins, you may take on the regiment or discharge them for the solid boots. Okay, do you meet these? Okay, so imagine you're, you're walking down the street and these nine dudes come up to you and they're like, hey, we'll fight for you. We're these nine dudes. Or you can have some solid boots. Which would you choose? I know what I would choose. We got the boots. As you approach the keep, you wonder if you could claim it, but its guards are innumerable, their defenses are impregnable, and their desire is only to stay neutral. However, you may exchange a very bunch of units here for just one type in return. Despite their tidy facade and tall walls, they prefer diversity within. Oh, they value diversity. That's nice. Let's see if we can switch Arcanus for clowns. No. Yes! Yes! Increase the clowns! We got, we got more clowns. We have more war clowns than we had previously. Musebit says the only thing I can find <laughs> directly related to it. Oh my god, I love that this is like a thing that is that barely exists. Uh, is a listing on an online comics vendor site for two ninety five, saying they don't have it in stock. That and the writer and illustrator both worked on a series based on oh on the game Killer Seven. Don't know anything about that though. Never heard of the game. Oh, Killer Seven is by um Grasshopper Manufacturer, right? It's uh not it's Suda Fifty One, I think. Uh, same people who did No More Heroes. And maybe Lollipop Chainsaw, some of those other games. I, I've, I've heard of it. It was before No More Heroes, though, I think. Was that a good trade? It was a good trade. We got more clowns. Yes. We, maybe we should play Killer7. I think I have... I, I th Can you get it on PC? I would play it. I've heard good things. Rankwa says the first result is images of some terrible comedy comic, like you find in a newspaper or some shit. And Musebit says no more heroes is fluorescent light lightsaber, right? Yeah! Oh, I loved playing that game on the Wii. I think it had one of, honestly, the best uses of the little speakers on the Wiimote, because there's a cutscene where you get called on a phone in that game, and they don't prompt you or anything, just all of a sudden, like, sound starts coming out of the little Wiimote speaker, and I remember playing the game and being like, oh, I'm supposed to hold this up to my ear like a phone to hear the quiet noises coming out of the Wii mode. I really liked it. It was a very charming moment. Uh, the game is a little bit incomprehensible, in my opinion, but I did like it. I didn't play the sequel, though. Alright, we're fighting some Molten Charers. A uh, difficult word for me to say. That is fantastic hardware usage, lol. I mean, it was, too. Like, they had a lot of good little mini-games with the motion controls and, like, the sword combat was used it to oh giant spatula redeemed same mixed greens okay let me see if i can say it i'm gonna say it in the most normal way that i possibly can mixed greens that's my normal human voice saying mixed greens did it work was it convincing all right we got all these i don't i don't okay war clowns up front everybody else in the back range units in the farther back but everybody else in the back war clowns die for me go we need more spells! Rango says, Caveman, the father, I made it for Christmas. I'll call it the telephone. The kid thinking, what's Christmas? With Stonehenge McDonald's in the background? I'm baffled by this. I don't know what this means, but I do like the imagery. <laughs> okay, our clowns all turn into, into charers. Or mixed greens, as we call them. I admit that this stream has gotten a little bit off the rails, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Anytime I can talk about the Trist. It's a good day. I like the music in this game. It's kind of jolly. Player one! Not player one, but player, you know, succeeded, was victorious. We lost two clowns, unfortunately. But the good news is... We get to summon two spirited fires, which aren't as good as clowns. Oh, I gotta level up again? Can I get more loyalty yet? Royalty yet? No, I have to be level 11, right? Let's get more learning so I can level up even more and have a, a more horrible time. What's here? What did I afford? This is in the Forge Lazio here to purchase the first aid tent in Ballista. That is some Heroes of Might and Magic 3 bullcrap. A first aid tent in the Ballista? If I could get an ammo cart, we'd be set. Uh, let's get a first aid tent. Let's get a first aid tent. Revives dying units on the battlefield, make them continue to fight. Yeah, 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 give me that. And we will skip the ballista. Ah, get the ballista, whatever. 
Rainbow says it keeps me uh, keeps wanting me to go to the Twist Doctor Who comic that also has like evil holy people. I think. Oh, interesting. What about a wheelbarrow and a Holocaust cloak? Oh, what is the Holocaust cloak from? I know what you mean. It like protects me from an explosion. And Wiseman says I hate that's how you pronounce it. Christ, but with a T instead of a Ch <laughs> or instead of a Kr. It's Trist. Okay, the reason he's called the Trist. All right, all right, all right. Do you want to know why he's called the Trist? It's barely a reason, but a Mexican woman says you're the the Trist, the true Christ. Is I think it's I think it's supposed to be true Christ. Um, let me see, cause he like okay, okay, okay. Because this is the edgiest comic in the world, I'll just share this with you. Uh, he there's like a, a drive-by shooting, and he revives the kid from the dead because he's the Trist, and he has to bring people back. And John Spencer says, specifically, that's a Princess Bride reference. Oh, that's the Holocaust cloak. Okay, I do remember now. They put him in the wheelbarrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's terrible. True Christ? Yeah, and then she says, um... Where's the line? She says, tu eres el triste. El triste. I don't know. I, you probably can't read it, but... She, this Mexican woman calls him the, the triste. And now he's the, 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 the tristo. He's the triste. Um, yeah, and the line is, she says, you are the Christ, you are the true Christ. That's the line, so he's the true Christ. His name is Isaac, it's the Christ. <laughs> we love it. It's a good comic. That's why they made so many of them, and why it's easy to discover information about it on the internet. Today, in the year of 2020. Two? <laughs> and today, in the year of 2022, doesn't know what year it is. We need to make a fandom page for this. Hello, my name is Treasus Trist. Oh my god. He's he's the true Treasus. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, we'll, we'll find a way. We'll do a stream where we, we go through the pages or something. Ah, oh, I love it. Um, Mercy. We gotta build something again? Oh, it's just this game is just a bunch of chores. Okay, what are we building? Uh, can we get a fort? Yeah, get more dudes per week. We should get this before the new week. And let's buy some more gunners. Miss <laughs> Princess. Oh, I don't know why that got me. He gets betrayed by Trudus. <laughs> Giant Spider says, "I think you have to scan this comic for the internet. We have to do it for the for archival purposes." Yeah, that's a good idea. We could scan it and and we could go do like a PowerPoint presentation. Miss <laughs> Princess. Lamau. Oh, it's so good. No, the only person, as far as I know, the only villain he fights, well, they, okay, we're going back. Because they, they, they hint at, you know, oh my god, you're not going to believe this. There's an ad for Killer7 in this comic book. I swear I didn't plan this. Um, just a weird thing. Just a weird, actually, there's two. Um, good gravy, as it happens. Um, it's blowing my mind. Um, okay. He, so, so we get a hint. He kills Kung Fu Shis. Spoilers for the Trist. I know you're all going to read the Trist. So I'm sorry for the spoilers. Uh, he kills Kung Fu Shis in the first issue. And he's like, oh, wherever there's light, there has to be a shadow, right? Where there's good, there's always evil. And so we get like a, a hint that there's going to be some other bad guy who I guess is like seven hands. But I don't know. We don't know who he is. They don't tell us in this first comic. It's just... They're just teasing us with the with the the real villain. Rango says, "I want I will make the Trist Discord server sometimes and make it public under the category of the Trist and comics superheroes and of course of course Christianity maybe theology. Let's discuss the theological implications of the Trist. What does it mean if you are pumped full of an experimental street drug and electrocuted with a car battery and now you have all the powers of Jesus Christ?" I want to read it, but we can't. I'll scan it in. I'll do that. I'll make that a project for tomorrow. Um, I could do that, especially if I do like a bad scan with my phone. We could get this. We could get this on the Discord server inside of 24 hours. So I think we could do it. We'll make it happen. Um, that's good. I need a little project. I could use something to to take my mind off all the the happenings of the world. And what better thing than the Trist? Okay, where are we going? This road ended. I guess we're looking for the green castle, right? Green guys are bad guys? It's like the second Bible. It has deep uh, theological implications. It better. Visiting the Fountain of Youth allows the hero to train in a might-oriented skill. Oh, we should do that. 
the verdant tide is moving. Musebot says has to be tagged as both Christianity and Tristianity. <laughs> True Christianity. That'll be the Trice Discord server the entire comic. Oh my god. I love the Trice. I seriously, okay. Sure not, to stir up, sure not to stir up any controversies. How could it? I want to tell you though, unironically, when I was in 2005, I would have been like 15 years old probably. And I read the Trice and I, I really, truly, honestly, I read this comic book and I was like, this is pretty good. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty cool. I want to read the second Trice comic, but I never did. Uh, Johnny, T96, hey, welcome. We're playing, um, uh, Heroes Hour, but only to a minor extent. It's like Heroes of Might and Magic, uh, but a little bit more hands-off. Um, I'm trying to pay attention to it, but we, we discovered an old comic book from 2005 that's been kind of diverting my attention. Kind of been consuming my mind, if I'm honest. Uh, okay, blah blah blah, we could buy an architect. It improves the town's development. Council's constructing four buildings instead of one. Increases gold income. Yes, more economy. We'll take it. I'll take the more economy. So we got more economy. That's great. Uh, really, really door still has nothing to do. Go grab some... What are you doing, really door? Go grab that gold. Go grab that campfire. You could be doing stuff. You could be getting more materials. Johnny says, uh, how's the game? I was thinking of getting it on Steam. It's okay. I would say... Honestly, I've been a little distracted. So I, I haven't formed, like, a strong impression of it. It's a lot like... If you really, really love Heroes of Might and Magic and want to play another Heroes of Might and Magic game, I would say check it out. Uh, especially, how much is it on Steam? Let me see, because I got it through the Humble Bundle. Let's go check out Steam real quick. Heroes Hour... Oh, it's on sale for five oh nine. I think that seems like a good price for it. If, if you're into these kinds of games... Sorry, we went off the map here. If you're into these kinds of games, if this is your cup of tea, if you loved Heroes of Might and Magic 3 and 2 and 5 and whatever, I, I, I would say maybe check it out. Rainbow says, listen all you Christians, your religion, it's wrong, been disproven, we must accept the true Christ, or in the holy man's words, the Trist. <laughs> Want to hear about our true Lord and Savior, the true Christ? Sorry, we're reading, the, the reason Rango is saying that, Johnny, is because we read, we looked at a comic from 2005 called The Trist, um, which is short for the true Christ. It's, it's, it's a superhero who has all the powers of Jesus. It's a bit, uh, unhinged. Okay, Rivian did all his work. Let's do, let's send Leo the Lion to the Fountain of Youth. Uh, well, the tales, okay, you get a new skill. Rank one Mercurial, spends one Mercury each day. We don't have any Mercury. This is the, the opposite of what I want. And creates Mercurial creatures for the hero's army. Creates four Mercurials plus two. Okay, so this will give us more dudes. Johnny says, oh, lol, okay. Yeah, we've gone off the rails a little bit on this stream, unfortunately. Unfortunately for people trying to form an impression of this game. Sure, let's take this skill that is the opposite of what I want. Uh, we'll get the gold. We can't. We already built this turn. Rhythian has done some... Gathered some easy resources. So this is just the tutorial level that we're playing right now. Why can't I move? What happened to Theo? Oh, is his, does he have too many dudes? Why is he tired? Tired? One. What does that mean? By the way, when is LEGO Battles coming? That's a good call. We should do LEGO Battles sometime. That'd be a good strategy game. I, I could get into that. I gotta figure out how to emulate it. Why, why is he tired? Theo. Let's give Theo one turn to maybe not be tired. Get rid of some clowns. It, I, is it too many dudes? So in Heroes of Might and Magic, your army moves as slow as the slowest dude. But we didn't accrue any new dudes last turn, I don't think. I don't know why Theo is tired one. It's a secret to me. I guess? Why that happened? Was it because he got the new skill? Theo, why are you tired? You have mana, 45 of 60. Knowledge, you have that, if, if that was necessary. Let's pass a turn and see if Theo stops being so tired. Rhythian, is there any mercury you can gather? Don't fight those dudes, you don't have any army. It's not a new week yet, so we'll give, we'll give Rhythian some... Um, Dudes, just send him back to town. We'll give him some dudes with a new week when the when the army fills up again, or when the uh, you know the dwellings fill up again. Let's get more income per day. Great. Is Theo still tired? No, Theo's not. Okay, well Theo just needed to take a nap, I guess. Theo was sort of tired for no reason. 
That's fine. Uh, look, they have... This is the green guy army. He's, like, riding one of the, um, turkeys from the game Joust on the Atari. Let's go fight him. They're turkeys. Don't tell me that they're ostriches or emus or whatever. I know what they are. Um, just needed a personal day. Theo took a mental health day right in the middle of... It's a wellness day. Okay, just put some dudes, put the melee... I mean, I don't really know if it's more nuanced than this. Put the melee dudes in the front, put the range dudes in the back. Uh, they get to ride on cool seahorses. I have to ride on a, a regular land horse, which I kind of hate. Uh, but we're going to crush these dudes, probably, and we'll summon some extra dorks into their back line. So where their range dudes are, boom, the dorks are summoned. Wait, is Theo not a lion? He doesn't look like a lion. He does in his picture, but here he looks like a man on a horse. I don't know what Theo is, but it's not good, whatever it is. Gregor says, as a kid I had a Spongebob game and had this cool idea where you draw all the enemies. Oh, I played a game like that on, on like, iOS, I think. Protagonists and items. I remember regretting as a kid making one of the platforms invisible. <laughs> yeah, that sounds regrettable, but I was too committed to change it back. Honestly, good for you to stick into your artistic integrity. I also had a Patrick fight where he inflates throughout the fight. I'm listening. So we took no casualties. The other team got totally crushed. Maybe he's a lion on a horse? I guess he must be, yeah. Uh, we can buy another spirited fire. It's not the same as a, a war clown, but we'll take it. Okay, so we gotta... So basically, this is the part where we gotta go figure out where these green dudes are coming from. Because it seems like we way outclass them. And hopefully, if we find the enemy town, we can just crush them. That's my hope. My fear is that they have a bunch of dudes. Oh my god, look. They captured something up here. A sulfur mine. We're gonna capture it. Rhythian, go get an army. Get some dudes to fight for you. Not there, though. But, can sit... No, uh, get, get an army first, and then we'll build with whatever's left. Uh, have some... No, I have no mercury, so I can't buy those guys. Okay, buy some, some, some stone gremlins. Buy some goblins. Rengus is it a town building stuff and was a platformer? You're, you've piqued my interest, honestly. <laughs> uh, can I buy some mercury at the marketplace? How much is it going to cost? So if I do buy, oh, I can only buy it for gold. Okay, buy a couple mercury, and then we'll we'll get the um, the dudes who need mercury. We'll get three of them. Perfect. The first area is like uh, the bikini bottom, which ends in the circus and fighting a giant steampunk meta, a mecha. And yes, I'm going off topic again on another game. It's all right. I can barely, honestly, honestly, barely pay attention to this game. Uh, let's fight these wolves with Rhythian. He gets to fight for the first time. So remember, he's a wizard. Will he have more spells? Nobody knows. We got some. I don't like the way that the grouping works. The second area is a jungle ending in a pyramid. Okay, so these guys... So the, we only have a few gargoyles, unfortunately, but they're going to go fight the, the wolves. Our range units are going to stay back, and Rhythian, you also stay back. You're also ranged. So a lot of work for the gargoyles to do. It seems like this faction is very ranged-focused. Can I cast a spell? Force field. What does it do? Affects friendly units, increases health and sturdiness, but decreases movement slightly. Okay, let's put it on our, our gargoyles. Because they're already up in the front line, so if we can just make them sturdier, that'd be great. I am sad that the dogs make sad dog noises. That kind of bums me out a little bit, if I'm honest. We killed 18 of them, though. We only lost one gargoyle. Oh, and we don't get dudes, but we can capture some mercury, which is exactly what we need. Moderate, easy. Let's go fight some more easy fights with Rhythian. Oh, nope. I seem to have been intercepted. No, a skeleton. Oh, those are skeletons. Okay, are they ranged? They have warding. This creature has a chance to avoid damage from elite creatures and has a high chance of being unaffected by spells. That's okay. All our spells are defensive. So that's fine. Force field. Look, this is the third area I remember being my favorite. It was like the deep dark area with eels and stuff and a haunted pirate ship. I like it because, yes, I like spoopy, uh, spoopy style areas, but also had the best power-ups and some more multiple paths and secrets. They remade one of the Spongebob games relatively recently, right? I think I had that on Steam, actually. Which one is it? Let me see. Let me just go to the old... Should we cut to Steam? We never do that anymore. Let's cut to Steam real quick and take a look. Which one do I have? 
SpongeBob, Battle for Bikini Bottom, re rehydrated. This isn't the one that you're thinking of, is it? It looks like a platformer. I don't see town building mechanics, though. Maybe not. Maybe it's a different one. Rungbat says, so from there, where do you think it heads? Like deeper in the ocean, the jelly fields or something? Try the moon with robots. Hey, if it worked for DuckTales. This one is not going to be remade. Look up SpongeBob drawn to life. Oh, okay, right. Rhythian has some more movement. Go pick up the Dusk Mage's cape, which does plus two spell power. Okay, he's a wizard. That's kind of good. He only knows one spell. Can I build like a mage guild to learn more spells at town? Arcane Spire. That's the one we need. Okay, let's build an Arcane Spire, and Rhythian will go back for the DS? Oh, okay, yeah. Might be tough to get a hold of. Okay, Rhythian, go back to town, learn a spell. First, get this, um, campfire. We learned... We got the Arcane Spire. I mean, should we buy more... It's, it's, it's mind-boggling to me. It seems really obvious to me that if you're on the page where you buy buildings, we should be able to see... Maybe it's just at this resolution? I bet it is. I bet it's because we're playing at a low resolution for the 720p stream. But it's a bummer that this overlaps the actual, like, resource counts that I have. I would want to be able to see all of that while I'm deciding what to buy. Anyway. Uh, champion statue? Oh, it's a statue of me! Improves the tavern, giving access to two possible heroes instead of one. It also gives 100 gold each day. That'll take 15 turns to pay off, though, because it costs 1,500. So let's not get that. Let's get an upgraded tower instead. Get better gargoyles. And Ringbot says, then there's a secret final area where it's a place? Question mark? IDK what it is, but it's a place. Most places are, it turns out. Uh, the final boss, normal final boss, I remember being brutal, as well as three-phase hard Spongebob fight before the next fight has you go up against a giant Spongebob you have to break the different parts of. I mean, sometimes these tie-in games are really tough, genuinely. I played, um... God, on the Wii, I played The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, I think it was, and that game had a boss fight that was hard as balls, dude, where you're fighting against, like, a big sphinx or something. I got incredibly stuck playing that game. Rigo says, I'll post trailer and game suggestion, but, uh, but it isn't that amazing. Oh, okay. Maybe more amazing to talk about than to, uh, to play. So we got the spell transform for Rhythian. He costs 11 mana, affects enemies, turning them into random units weaker than the original for the rest of the battle. Okay, so we can, like, polymorph people. That's kind of fun. Uh, let's go fight these, uh, evil eyes. Again. Oh, we should have seen if we could upgrade our, our gargoyles who already exist. It's fine. And then transform. Whoa. Transform on... Put it on the evil eyes in the back. Turn them into a bunch of random dorks. Oh, yeah. Oh, they have a penguin? Whoa, 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 whoa. Which faction do I have to play as to get a penguin? And a toucan. This is like the cool birds faction. Uh, force field on everybody. It seems like our gargoyles got decimated. Oh, no, they're just hanging out down here? In any case... The, their melee dudes are in our back lines, which is not really considered a good thing, typically. But we only lost one gargoyle, so maybe maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, Rhythian gets to level up! Okay, so he can have... Aethermancy. And he has Aeromancy, too. He has an air spell. Can I... I already have these, though, right? Regeneration gets more mana. I want to learn more spells, I think. Recruits Arcanist for this hero's army over time. So a lot of these skills are putting more, like, unique units in our army. Let's get more Aeromancy. And see if I learn a new spell. Holy Light. Yeah, what does that do? Affects all friendly units. Heals wounds. Seems handy. Okay, cool. So now Rhythian can heal people. Let's send Theo, the big cool lion, to capture there. Can I see where they're... I wonder if that was telling me where their castle was. Based on where the little sulfur carts were going. Maybe not. Do they have more stuff up here? A graveyard? It's impossible. Challenging. Let's not do challenging fights. Again, in these games, we don't want to do hard fights, I feel like, because they just wear down our army. 
Rengan says, also that game has you like draw most of the enemies yourself in the first area, but like all the other areas mostly just have 3D models. That's kind of a bummer. It's not even committing to its own concept. Oh my god, they're coming for Rhythian. Quick, we gotta go intercept. So they are up this road, as we, as we kind of sniffed out. Rhythian's not helpless, but he is close to helpless. If you play it, I will challenge you to make an invisible enemy. Seems like a fun, cool challenge. Okay, Rhythian, you gotta get... Take the experience, level up again. Get more Ethermancy. Did you learn a new spell, my boy? He did not. I don't know how that's supposed to work. Uh, go up the road. If, just out of interest, if you fought this person, it would be challenging. Okay, go go to the castle. Also, the trailer is very 2000s. Painfully so. Interesting. Uh, what should we buy here? Should we buy more units at the university? Let's get it. Ivory Palace has grown to city. We have patriotism now. And a library. It's a real city. Cool. Patriotism, done. And let's <laughs> buy some units. We'll buy some flying carpet mans. Or arcanists, if you will. Rhythian, there's not really anything for else for you to do. Just walk up the road, I guess. Go to this go to the shrine and learn a spell. And pick up that ore. And get ready to intercept the enemy, because they're coming to ruin my life. Where did they go? He went up here. So he may still have fog of war. He may not realize that we see him. It's unclear to me. I guess there's not fog of war in this game. Once you've explored somewhere, it seems like I can see everything that's happening there. Rhythian, go pick up the ore. Go learn a spell. He learned stone skin, which is weird that he learned a different spell from that shrine than the other guy did. I consider that somewhat surprising, but okay, sure, whatever. It's fine. Do I want to build anything back at the old homestead? We could upgrade the Hall of Shaping to get better... No, I don't want automatons. Empire of Arcane can be built. Get more more gold per day. Do it. Invest. Verdant Tide Guy, where is he going? One of the nice things in Heroes of Might and Magic, anytime... I know I keep... Com it's, it's only fair to compare this game to that game, because they're the same, basically. But one of the nice things is, when it's the enemy's turn, if they're moving within your field of vision, like, they put the camera on them so you can see what they do. But here, they don't do that, so I kind of don't know where this guy effed off to. But we can look for him. We can hunt him down. Artisan's Lodge. This thing the Artisan's Lodge allows you to have a small group of units trained to elite units. Same number, much more valuable. Take three days while the units are left behind? No, let's not do that. Let's walk up the road. Let's see if... Let's assume that his castle might be up the road. Ready and get ready to fight. Put your 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 guys in front. Everybody else is ranged pretty much, right? A bit awkward. We have we're just very ranged heavy. This is like the academy in Heroes of Might and Magic, I think. Kind of the same. Should we put stone skin on our dudes? Do it. Maybe we did have that spell. Maybe it wasn't. No, we got force field before. I don't know what's real. Am I poisoned or something? Why is my guy? Why is my guy green? This to me is just chaos. I, I don't know what we're doing here. Can I cure? Oh, we won. Before I could do it, we lost two uh, gargoyles and one ice sculptor. I don't have the demonology ability, which is fine. Get some resources from the windmill. Yeah, Rhythian, go look over here. Go see what's going on down this way. A lost hero. You could have four mercury. Give me the four mercury. We do need it, actually. Okay, Rhythian's doing stuff. We love to see it. Build something at the town? Rainbow says, my take on this game so far, charming, has a lot of potential, but the combat does not reflect its interesting mechanics well at all, and it's too generic. It's, I mean, that's... Maybe if I spent a lot of time with it, you could tell more what's going on in the combat. But I think I'm on the same page as you there. Like, it's just like... I kind of... It ju it's just a kind of a bunch of guys mashing into each other. It's hard to tell, like, when we have a new skill or when we cast a spell, when we take action, or when we rearrange our guys. You know, we put our input in. It's hard to tell what effect it actually has on the combat. Oh, there's this dude! He's, he's trying to dodge me, but he's going to get absolutely crushed by me instead. Oh, he has two dudes. 
Oh, splitting his army. That's an interesting choice. Okay, let's kill everybody. First fight, war clowns go in the front. You know how you know how it is. We have some mercurials. This is all fine. Put these people up front. Great. So Henry says, have we all played Child of Light on this channel yet? No, I haven't actually. I just started it today and it feels so Piotr-esque. I haven't heard of this game. Child of Light, I'll check it out. Rengot says, it feels like interesting ideas, but didn't work well on its core mechanics and went too hard on its more generic aspects than its more interesting aspects. I could see that. I mean, it seems like this game... I guess it seems like the interesting thing about this game potentially is there might be like a lot of different units and like a lot of different ways to compose an army, but I I'm really not sure. I, I can't tell for sure. Let's summon some dudes in their back line, as we do. Disrupt the range guys with our anima guys. Cure. We don't need to cure yet, but keep an eye on it. Look for an opportunity. Let's just drop a cure. Whatever. Cure all these guys. We have the mana for it. We have 54 mana. We're crushing them. It's great. And then we'll crush their other army too. Player one. We took no casualties. This is These are the kinds of fights we want. So Fighter says, Child of Light is on sale on Switch for five bucks for another like two hours. I love my deals on games. Oh man. Wait. I actually might need to check that out then. <laughs> uh, a Pyre Beast. Oh, it's like a uh, nightmare in Heroes. But I guess it's maybe a pig instead of a horse? Unclear. Kill this man. War Clown's up in front. You know what to do. Pyre Beast, you also should go up in front. No, 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 no. These guys can be combined. How do I unsplit these guys? Shift. Oh, these controls are weird. I get it, but they are weird. Okay, send the clowns up. Mercurial's up. Pyre Beast's up. Gargoyle's up. Theo up. Everybody, all the ranged dudes in the back. Oh, we're going to crush these guys. They only have a few silly dudes. Summon the anima right on them. Bam! Rango says, Sacrifice I posted, which looked up your alley. Oh, I do remember looking at that. I like the look uh, of Azura's more directly on control, both on your units and also being more directly involved in moving, casting spells, and collecting souls. Yeah, I think that's kind of... I think that is kind of what I want from this game. Is I wish I was a little bit more... I get it. I get that they wanted to expedite the battles. I get that they wanted to be able to focus more on kind of the, the high level strategy stuff, but I I, I want to be more hands on. Summon some dudes and let's move up the road. Oh, there's their castle. Is that their castle? We're going to crush them. Are we about to win? War clowns, get in there. Okay, so let's see. They've got their garrison wall. We're fighting their hero at their castle. We got them. Okay, but, 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 but. Clowns combine. Melee units up front. I mean, is this a strategy? Melee units up front, range units in the back. I am a true, uh, who's a brilliant strategist? A true Kongming over here. A true Sun Tzu. Unwiser says, why do you hate seahorses? Because I envy them. I, w I just gotta ride this regular brown horse down here it's not even brown it's like it's like landlord white horse and i'm a lion and i should be able to ride be a lion riding a seahorse that's what i want now this is also in like the sacrifice this is more dense core mechanics it makes good use and hard choice around a few more mechanics than a million of them oh i see i get you we have a new whoa, whoa, whoa. explosion i would love to explode their guys oh great I guess we had, we had a different spell that time. Anima, summon Anima in their back line. We're, I do like that we break down their walls. That's kind of fun. That's also a classic Heroes of Might and Magic thing. Where Catapult like breaks down their walls a little bit every turn. Did we win? Boom! We took one, we lost one Mercurial, but somehow gained a Firefly? So I don't know what that means. Oh yeah! Another War Clown. We'll take him. Summon for 400 XP. Ugh. Theo, are you level 11 yet? Okay, get more bodyguards. You can't. You're not allowed to. Get more may. Get more offense. I don't care. Now we fight this hero. He's all by himself. It's kind of mean almost, this fight. 
I don't feel good about this at all, but summon some dorks around him. Surround him with dorks! So do I win if I capture their castle? Ah, oh, victory! All enemies have been vanquished and you are now the victor! Congratulations, you won on day six of week three. For you mathematicians, or non-mathematicians in the chat, that would be seven times three is 21, 27 days! You may continue playing or start a new map with harder difficulty. I mean, if I've won, I don't really see a reason to continue playing. Uh, what do these lines represent? Don't worry about it. This, the red line is higher than the green line. That's what's important. Let's go back to the main menu. Tell you what, it's a little early, but uh, this is a good place to stop this stream. We, we, we checked out Hero's Hour. I'm intrigued by it, but it's a little bit mean to say, but honestly, honestly, end of the day, I'd rather just reinstall Heroes of Might and Magic 5 and play that than do Hero's Hour, I think. It's, it's charming. I'd be interested to see how many just like dudes there are, how many units there are, because it seems like probably there are a lot, but I, I don't know. Yeah, there are a lot of dudes. There's a lot of dudes. That's fair. That's something maybe that would interest you. I would say if you if you love Heroes of Might and Magic, you've played all of the games backwards and forwards and sideways, you just want more of kind of the same, maybe check out Heroes Hours. Uh, Ringwet says, uh, which I like, some games can have too many core mechanics, which sacrifice, while sacrifice can control it more and make them more interconnected, but with less. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's like why, um, what's a game, what's another game that's like that, where it has sort of fewer mechanics, but really more interesting choices? Uh, Into the Breach is kind of a, a classic game that I think in that sense, right? Where it's like a strategy game, but the number, like, the, the number of different mechanics are pretty limited, but you get to use them in lots of interesting ways. Anyway, this is Into the Breach, this is Heroes Hour, we liked it okay. We met Theo the Lion, he was okay, we got some War Clowns, they were okay. Uh, we probably won't come back to this game again, though, on this stream. For now, though, let's go to the calendar real quick, just to wrap up. I gotta open the calendar, because I didn't have it ready. Hopefully it says the right thing. Oh, it does. Perfect. Great. So, we will go to the calendar now. Bam! Cool! XCOM 2, XCOM 2, and XCOM 2. We do gotta check those... all three of those games out sometime. Uh, this has been New Game Wednesday. We played Heroes Hour. We liked it okay. It's inoffensive. I know that seems like damning it with faint praise, but that's exactly what it deserves. Uh, we won't be streaming tomorrow, but we will be back on Friday from 8 to 10. And LEGO Battles, true! We'll be back on Friday from 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. We'll be playing some more Hollow Knight. That is the main game that we've been playing right now. Uh, we're a good chunk of the way in. How close are we to finishing? I have no idea. I've never played it before. Uh, again, that'll be Hollow Knight on Friday from 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. If you watch any of this stream live tonight, thank you so much for watching live. And if you watch this as a recording or on YouTube, thank you so much for watching that way too. And until next time, I will see you later.